First of all, uh, thank you for having me here. It's a really great honor. Uh, he's right, we're about 35 days into the acquisition. Um, today, I'm gonna be talking about how you can empower sales and marketing through systems of engagement. Uh, this was an interesting talk. Um, I got pulled in and said, hey, we really need you to give this keynote and we wanna make it, make it relevant. And a lot of what I do in my job, and I have one of the coolest jobs in the world, uh, in my opinion, is I get to talk to sales and marketing leaders, CMOs, CROs, uh, VPs of sales, to tell them about where technology is going so can, they can be more successful engaging with their customers. So one of the interesting things that came up while I was doing research on this is digital transformation is sort of this bigger umbrella that everything that I've been working on over the last 10 years falls under. Uh, and so today we'll be talking about everything that we've learned at Marketo and ToutApp around engage, systems of engagement, which is a little bit of a secret right now. Uh, before I joined Marketo about 35 days ago, I started a company about six years ago called ToutApp. I started in my second bedroom in my apartment out in Connecticut. Uh, we raised about $20 million of venture capital, and over the years we built it out to a piece of software that gets used by Siemens, CA, GE, IBM, and also smaller companies like Dropbox, Box, Atlassian, Optimizely. And the biggest thing that we learned, uh, the secret that we came up on, was that IT professionals, people that were practicing digital transformations in organizations, absolutely nailed it over the last 10 years in building out systems of record. So CRMs, accounting systems, finance systems. 15 years ago, you didn't even have email, you didn't have phone, uh, you didn't have uh, Blackberries, and over a period of time, this room, the people in this room were successful in adding those things to the workforce. And then they said, great, we've got all these documents, we've got all these emails, we have to make all these phone calls, we need to track it all. So then we continued on and built out systems of record. How do we just log everything down? How do we get all these people to log all the things that are happening in the day-to-day -day of the business so we can be smarter for it? And so today, any company that we walk into, probably most of your organizations has a CRM, has email, has iPhones, has all of these things. So my job as someone that lives in San Francisco and builds startups is to find secrets. What is the secret? Where is digital transformation, enterprise transformation? Where are these things going next so that we can start to build those things and quite honestly, get them in through shadow IT because we're tiny companies when we start, get enough revenues going, raise more money, and make them into big categories that are obvious for everyone to purchase today. Today, a thing like marketing automation, like Marketo, is an obvious thing that every marketer purchases, but it wasn't the case in the beginning. And so our job was to find a secret for sales and marketing leaders and say, what is the next thing that you need to be investing in? And what we found was that engagement is the big thing that is lacking today. True, authentic engagement and true systems of engagement. And so today I'm gonna to talk about three things and just only three things because you're always supposed to have three things. Uh, why is engagement important? How are enterprises already adapting to systems of engagement and this new engagement economy? And how you, leaders that are CIOs, IT leaders, the people that are really controlling the budget and driving the macro view of the digital transformation in your company, how are you gonna drive that in a meaningful way? So first, let's just talk about digital transformation. I loved the way Maribel articulated it. It's a journey. Digital transformation did not start with the first computer. It did not start with the internet. It started thousands of years ago when sing singular people were put in charge to figure out how to make 100 people more effective at what they do. That is what we do here today with digital transformation. We're adopting tools, technologies, processes, systems, to make digital transformation successful so that our workforce, the people that work with us, are 10 times more productive. And I'm sure you go into some of these conferences and you hear, it's all changing so fast. Your job is not going to be there. So I thought I would first take a moment and congratulate all of you. Who would have thought 
that 10 years ago, 3.2 billion humans would be connected on a singular network and could communicate with each other instantly. Not only that, each and every employee in your company could email each other instantaneously with a photo of what they're watching, takeaways from the business trip, update a record about a deal, that, how it's trending, or whether it's trouble, all instantly. Each of you made that possible, and each of you made that a reality. And in the history of humans, this is the biggest thing we've ever accomplished, this level of connectedness. So first of all, digital transformation is going great, better than ever, so we can all congratulate ourselves. However, as with humans, you give them something shiny, you give them a new iPhone, sure enough, six months later, they're like, I don't know, it's kind of slow. It's just not as cool, it's not as thin, and I wish the battery lasted longer. So when I talk to sales and marketing leaders, they say, we have built incredible systems. A random e-commerce vendor can do 1.6 million transactions a day. They can email billions of people off their email list. They can manage billions of transactions and events that are being detected through IoT devices. However, really quickly, things change. It's not enough. And when I talk to sales and marketing leaders, the big thing that they're worried about is buyer expectations have radically shifted. Buyers today recognize that if I went on Amazon and I looked at a certain shoe, when I go on Facebook, that shoe's following me around. You probably decided not to buy that shoe and they should have realized that, but that's a different thing. How many of you had that? They just follow you, right? A little creepy, but also really powerful. So buyers have started to say, you know what? I want more personalized experiences. I demand it. And in fact, I will pay a little bit more. I will go to the brand that's a little bit more valuable, and I will work with the person that I like if I get a better experience. And we have built incredible systems that can push so many interactions towards a person, but they're saying, wait, there's something off here. And that's what I mean by engagement. Over the last 10 years, we pulled off something that humans weren't able to do before. We connected everyone. Then we did things that humans haven't been able to do before with the click of a button. I can reach millions of people. The challenge for us as leaders is to figure out how to make it meaningful, how to engage in an authentic way. So today, customers, whether it's your employees that are your customers, or the CRO or the CMO who you work with, they're dealing with their customers. They're asking for connections on more channels than ever before. We love being connected. But if I'm on email, you should know I went to your store yesterday. Or if I signed a huge deal with you and got stake with your top rep, well, why didn't the CEO follow up with me? I thought I was your biggest deal this quarter. All of these channels are connecting us, but people are telling us that I want you to be more authentic. I want you to engage with me in a meaningful way. So this is, this is one of the ways that we explain why the engagement economy is important. Here's the thing. As marketers and salespeople that work with you, the thing that we figured out, this is the law of supply and demand, we can drive infinite demand drivers, meaning I can send 10 million emails tomorrow if I sent 5 million yesterday. The systems can do it. Yes, there are scaling issues. You probably have to pay more, but it's possible. However, as the law of supply and demand goes, the more I push, the less people will give attention. It applies to you as well. The more technologies you push towards the business side, the harder enablement becomes a problem. There's a meta-level play here too. And what you'll start to see is as we get better and better in our systems to push more, bigger scale, more connectedness, more channels, people push back and say, wait a minute, what do I even pay attention to? This is the engagement economy, the supply and demand. We didn't hit it before because at most you could shout in the village square and they think you're the crazy guy and they'll ignore you. But now we can shout really loudly and we won't even realize what the engagement returns are and people can turn away. And not only that, your competitor is doing the same. And that new incumbent, that brand new two-person startup out of San Francisco can buy the same technology that you're providing 
to your leaders and do the same thing as well. Technology is an equalizer, and everyone can be as loud as possible. The last uh, fundamental law of nature that I'll bring up here is the law of diminishing returns. So we figured out volume, we figured out scale, but now the more we do, the worse it gets. The people don't pay as much attention. Conversion rates go down. The more technology you add, the more complexity there is. It's harder to maintain, harder to scale, and harder to get people to use it. So you have to start to figure out how to provide value. And that's where this whole idea of engagement comes in. We do this with all the people that we consult with, uh, our customers, CMOs, CROs. You have to shift it now. CMOs and CROs, who you work with, uh, have to shift their messaging and their strategy into things where they listen, learn, and inspire. It's the brands that can emulate the corner store in your small neighborhood at scale are the ones that are going to win. What do, what do us as humans like? We like to be recognized. So when I walk into a store, if they're able to say, oh, hey, TK, I sold you that car two years ago. I hear you've got about 50,000 miles on it. It's been pretty reliable. How's it going? Are you buying a second one? Are you looking to replace it? And also, I just saw that your company got acquired. So are you trading up? That is an authentic experience. And that is what this whole digital transformation is about, right? Over the last 10 years, we've enabled our enterprises to be able to write everything down into systems of record. We've been able to add technologies like big data and analytics to look at the entire sea of data and analyze the customer view. But still, we're stuck on just rote emailing, cold emails, blasts, talking without thinking about what do we know about this customer. And that's the secret that we've been working on. That's the secret that Marketo's capitalizing on now as it becomes more and more well known. In order to be successful, in order to listen, learn, and inspire, sales and marketing leaders, information technology leaders will have to start to build out systems of engagement so that they're not just doing it in a massive scale without thinking about how to be strategic around it. That's what I just said. Just says it on the slide now, too. Um, here's the thing. Whether you realize it or not, sales and marketing leaders are already doing this. In fact, if you look at the year over year, the number of sales and marketing technologies that exist today most of them software as a service. It's super easy to get installed and get running in your organization with a don't tell IT policy in some cases is huge. 3,500 sales and marketing technologies in 2016. 3,874 to be exact. Isn't that crazy? And I know what you're thinking. Oh, that's just there's a lot of duplicates. There's a lot of categories. My organization, there's no way. We have a tight lockdown. They're not doing it. This is what the whole thing looks like. Each of them have categories with analysts, some of them with magic quadrants. This is real. This whole system of engagement, taking, making meaning out of the system of record, making meaning of all this data, and engaging with customers in a meaningful way is a very real thing. And there are a lot of companies trying to figure it out. Don't take my word for it. Very recently, something cool happened. And I'm surprised that it took marketing leaders to do this, that IT leaders didn't think of this first. Marketing leaders started to sit down with their graphics teams and started to map out their technology stack. I'm amazed that when's the last time you saw a competition with a bunch of IT leaders comparing their stacks? You don't see it as often. But the marketing leaders went out there. This is called the Stacky Awards. And they sat down and they mapped out all the technologies they use across the entire buyer journey. Everything from acquiring a lead, to finding out more about that person, to storing the data, to massaging that data, processing that data, analyzing that data, and then connecting with the customers in a meaningful way. Microsoft is a Marketo customer. We're a core part of their stack, but it just goes to show how big this space is. You might be saying, okay, that's Microsoft. They have a bigger IT budget than God. It's possible. Let's look at Alcadia. 
Alcadia has raised about $30 million. They're a private company. They are also a Marketo customer. But look at the number of technologies they're using. And when I meet with CMOs and CROs, the wor there's one word that comes up all the time. You'll never guess what the word is. It's not I love my IT person. That's not always the case. They use the word cobble. And it's used in a phrase usually. They say, I've had to cobble together 50 different technologies to make my stack work. That is opportunity and a wake-up call for everyone in this room. We've accomplished amazing things, but we have to keep looking ahead. And why is this happening? This is happening because in the front lines, revenues aren't growing as fast. Attention is being lost because we're pushing more and they're reacting less. And so entrepreneurs like me have created 5,000 plus technologies to help understand who the people are, understand the data, and build out systems that help prioritize leads, build out systems that make the phone call at the right time and send the email and track what happens to it. And this is happening because the frontline leaders are starting to see that something's changed. They're starting to realize that in this journey of digital transformation, you need to actually invest in systems of engagement. So the question then becomes, what does that mean for you as leaders of digital transformation in your organizations? Yes, there's machine learning. Yes, there's a better device. Yes, there's internal IT and processes that you always have to invest in. But where does sales and marketing fit into that, the lifeblood of your company, the thing that really funnels your budgets, right? Sales and marketing, if they over deliver, your budget goes up. That's a very important thing to remember. And what we found always is there was very little alignment between these three organizations. First of all, sales and marketing, always, always very, very different personalities, so they don't always get along. So you start seeing silos of technologies in just these two departments. And then with IT, in the more mature organizations, We've sold to a lot of large companies, so we've seen this. They get involved towards the end, and then they say, okay, like, let's just go through your security compliance, and let's make sure you have single sign-on, and let's make sure the data is, uh, has a retention policy, and let's also look at the audits that you've done. But there's so much more that you can be doing. If you were to take the meta level here, your customers, sales leaders and marketing leaders, they also today are being barraged with more technologies than ever before, 5,000 more, 5,000 and more. And they don't know which one to pay attention to, which one not to. They need your help. And so your challenge is to help the business listen, learn, and inspire at a massive scale as they pick their technology choices. As with most companies that are in the business of being in an open platform like Marketo is and working with partners so that you have a recommended stack for your marketing and sales teams, we've developed a framework. And I'll go through this framework a little bit. I won't go through all the slides for it. But this is what we wish every customer did, the buyer for us, when they're a CMO or a CRO. This is what we wish they did. We actually wish they took a look at the platforms that are out there and said, you know what? Instead of just letting people run rogue and install 80 different technologies, Let's run it through a process. Let's really talk about how we are going to engage with customers. Let's really talk about how that data is going to flow. Let's really talk about who's at the center of that, who's the keeper of that data. Are they an open platform? Or do they just have a business model of selling you more things and not let you go out and partner with the best of breed software? Let's evaluate those things so that my sales team is productive and my marketing team is engaging in an authentic and meaningful way. And so I'll quickly run through these, because they'll be made available online at marketo.com. You want to go through what the business model is for your business. It's pretty straightforward. But there are some best practices, depending on which industry you're in. Uh, you want to figure out what your go-to-market strategy is. A lot of IT leaders don't know and don't care. But we're now at a point where engagement is so important to the success of your company it doesn't matter what database you store the data in. It matters how you use that data to engage with customers. That is, that is what we're going to do as leaders for digital transformation over the next 10 years. So you want to understand how sales and marketing works. You want to understand your organizational needs. 
And I think most of us have done IT scoping before, so you get this, it makes sense. What doesn't get done in a meaningful way? Not with the constituents at the table. And lastly, you really want to figure out your vendor strategy. You want to go with a partner that is open, lets you do best of breed software, but has some governance. You want to make sure that they're going to be around over the next 10 years. And you want to make sure that the costs are managed in the right way. These are things CMOs and CROs don't know to ask. They just integrate the 80 technologies. They need your help in doing that. So Marketo is an engagement platform. We believe that this engagement economy is going to be pretty big. And there's, it's going to feed the massive shift in the market. That's the only part of the commercial. Um, and as I kind of researched this presentation, especially for this audience, I wanted to make it relevant for you. And I found that there was this double meaning in everything I was saying. The double meaning being, this is very true for companies to customers, but also very true as IT leaders, enterprise leaders, to CMOs and CROs. You got to listen to them, inspire them, and learn from them, and help them build out their marketing and sales stacks. Because if you can own that, then you're going to have a huge, massive differentiator in the type of relationship IT has in an organization. There's always going to be where we started. Let's make sure people have computers and phones and emails. Then let's make sure we have the right systems and policies and governance. But if you can have a direct line to revenue and improve that, if you can give a competitive advantage to how you engage with your customers, that's going to unlock a whole level for you guys in terms of exposure in an organization. So my message to you at the end of the day is engage. Engage with the CMO, engage with the CRO, engage with the customers. And if you can be the person that glues this together and brings it together, in the engagement economy where you have to now be personalized and authentic and connect with your customers in a strategic way, you're going to win. Thank you.